Hi, this is David from Manila Ranch. Uh, we're gonna make an instructional video today on how to assemble a three-tier, nine-section cage. This information can be translated to any other of our cage systems. We're gonna hit the key points of the water troughs and the back straps. That has been a question that you guys have had lately. So here with me today, helping me assemble this, is gonna be Elizabeth. Alrighty, so let's get started. First thing you're gonna need is obviously square away your equipment. You're gonna need a set of scissors or a knife could work. 7 16 box end wrench. I would rec strongly recommend a box end wrench. Uh, a set of pliers if you do not have a wrench. A Phillips screwdriver. And obviously a nice little bowl to keep your hardware, you know, in a nice neat place. If you don't have a bowl, you know, it's perfectly fine. So here in the shop, we like to make our lives easier and we have our own equipment to use. Obviously we have impact drivers and it just makes the life a lot easier. Obviously it's gonna be her choice on what equipment she would like to use. Alrighty, so this is how your cages are gonna be uh, packaged. So you can see, they got their nice little clear film wrapping on. You know, they're on top of the cardboard boxes, uh, just to you know give you an illustration how it would be. Alrighty, this customer did order the casters. We do send them in two separate packages. That way, you know, you can have your pairs. Obviously keep, that, keep accountability of that. So you're gonna have your first part of the frame, dump everything and get your cage nice squared away. So these are gonna be coated. Uh, the frame's gonna be color coded and your cage system is gonna be numbered off. Starting with your top, number one. It goes from one, two, and three to the bottom. As you can see, we do have a different flooring. It's a feature specific to the nine section or this particular cage. You're gonna have your half inch by one inch PVC coated welded wire. And in the center of this wire is a steel core wire. All right, so you're gonna have that nice fancy PVC coating to it, but it's still the rigidity of a welded wire. Here's our number two cage system. Obviously when you're assembling your frame, you're gonna wanna lay it down and you're gonna see the color codes here and here and here and here in both halves. If for any reason it falls off in shipping, you're gonna still have this to fall back on. One of the arches has its couplings, the other one does has it on the other half. Just in the very case, you know, anything happens, you know. So we're almost ready to go to start assembling our frames. With this, we recommend that you lay your cages down like this. That way you have gravity doing all the work for you. You're not juggling anything in there. All right, let's focus up on how to get this stand ready to go. So when we ship it, we have these set screws all the way in. You're just gonna back it out. These are already backed out. Leave them nice and snug. All righty. So what is left is gonna be our back straps and trays. Casters front strap, our front strap, we're gonna be able to identify it with the logo and it's also gonna say front strap. You're gonna have your other pair of casters with your hardware and your other back strap. So your feeders and your troughs are nice and wrapped. We'll get to the troughs in a moment. And assembling the frames is a relatively quick situation. As you can see, she's making easy work of it. Alrighty, so this is an assembled frame, of course. So you got these nice and snug, nice and snug, and you're ready to go. So since the frame is on the ground, I'll be able to explain these carriers. So these are oval in the sense that some people like a little more slope, some people do not like the slope as inclined. You're honestly able to adjust that as you see fit. And all our, the cage systems have carrier groups. So, for instance, you're, you have this already mounted on the frame. I'll give you a better explanation, but I just want to touch base. You just do any adjustments like this or that. But here we know the ranch, we like making your life easy. So this already comes pre-sloped from our shop. Like I said, if the customer sees it fit to give it more or less incline, that is up to you. So she's about to... Oh, thank you. So... We have this right front or Romeo Fox shot. Obviously it's gonna be the front part of the frame to the front part of your cage. You're gonna to wanna to orient it that way. That way everything else falls into place. Here you got your left front or Lima Fox shot. 
and that way you can just have everything oriented and it all falls into place nice and smoothly all right let me just set that out and get out of her way so with this nine section cage system you're you're going to be asking yourself what, what would be the use for it and that's that's relatively simple question to answer you're going to want to use it for bob whites or just a breeding group that you want a specific bloodline with it this we recommend it more towards bob whites since they work better in trios duos or you can have up to three females and one male they, they, they like to be more i guess coupled up now another thing is going to be our solid partitions solid partitions is so the bird is not distracted you know looking at the other side seeing what's going on with that they're, they're more focused and they're not trying to peck at each other also it does serve as a dual purpose to keep your birds um, separated in case you have to quarantine or just have a rotation cage so if you dump your hardware out in a nice little bowl you're gonna have bolts and nuts always start from the center and then from there on you can move wherever you would like it's uh in my in my experiment experience i start from the center and go to the rear but it's mainly up to you it's however you see it fit however you see it more comfortable for you all righty she's gonna get that squared away so as you can see the the size of the actual section itself so in this like in the winter time in our personal opinion it would be five like i said in the winter time you're going to want to add more so they can have their own body heat in the summer three four is just pushing it that's what we would say some people in the market like saying 12 but we think that's a little that's nuts so you're always going to want to keep that in mind the comfortability of your birds keep it somewhere humane yet efficient now these are the nine section we talk about our communities a lot when you're dealing with Coturnix quail. So with a community cage, you're going to have a higher yield of egg and meat production. But they're going to be running around more, so it is going to get a little more messy. With these cages, since they're a little more sectioned off, they're not going to be nearly as messy. But at the same time, you got to think about what your pros and cons. Like I said, this is mainly meant for a bobwhite quail. The other ones are meant for Coturnix. So with more production, you are going to have a little more maintenance. So see, she's doing nice and quick. So there is two bags of hardware. We have the bolts in the clear bag. Obviously, this is your instruction that comes in a hardware bag. Obviously, we've been doing this for a while, so we didn't need to read that. And we also have your screws. These are your self-tapping screws for like it says on the baggie, your front and back straps. You're not gonna wanna mix those up or lose those. All right, super. You just get to ride on in there. Nice and quick. All righty. So let me just pan, now we can see the cage. And you're gonna be asking yourself, you know, hey, where, where, where are the end caps? Well, like I said in the, in the beginning of the video, you're going to have your casters. Now, when she pulls them out, you can orient them however you would like. These casters do have two casters that are brakes and the other ones that are just uh, followers. You can put the both brakes up on one side, to the front, to the rear, however you see it easier for you so you can maneuver your cage around. All right, super. There's the one with the brakes. And these have the same set screws. And it's good that I can show you here how they're all the way in. You're going to want to back those up a little bit. That way you can obviously get them in, get them nice and snug. And with these, you can snug them up. You can tighten them. Since this is going to be a part of the cage, we're not going to be touching. This is just going to be a one and done. All right. It's nice and easy. This is how the bolt fits through the hole into the carrier group. As you can see, you got this adjustment right there. And then you're good to go. Here's your brake. And then we're going to go on to rotating the cage to get to the other side of the frame. All 
tidy. See how she did the little hang loose on and grab the cage? There you go. Goes to the bottom, pulls it by the frame. That way you're not tugging and pulling on the cage. All right, super. Obviously, you're going to want to leave these nice and laid down. Don't cause a tripping hazard for yourself. Lay the other one on top, just like last time. And get back to adding your hardware. So, when having a cage system in, a, let's say, a hen house or a chicken coop, whatever you would like to call it, you're going to want to keep in mind that the birds... You know, them being chickens, they see something and they want to go stand on it or perch up. So with that, since we got the feeders out in the front, we do have the customization of adding a feed and egg protector to keep those chickens outside of your quail's feed. That way you're not obviously constantly, you know, walking in and saying, oh my God, the chicken ate all the feed. No, you got that taken care of. So that brings me to my next point with customizations. Here at Winola Ranch, we like working with you and we like hearing your opinions on whatever cage need you may have. Whether it's you know ours or something else that you have any questions about, we'd love to help you out and get that squared away for you. And like I said, here we like making your life easier. Alrighty, you're getting it nice, nice and quick. Bang bang! Grab your other set of casters. Do the same thing on this side. Like I said, the orientation is really up to you. We did the ones with the brakes up here in the front. Super. Obviously, when you're doing this, another point is don't tighten these. See how they're, you're able to move them because you still have to do the adjustments where you lift up the cage and set it on the ground. You're going to check that out. Alrighty, always to keep that in mind. So let me get a good angle of her installing this. Alrighty. As you can see, nice and snug. Super. We're good to go. We're ready to stand this bad boy up. You can see? Grabs it. You can use the casters to help you out. Get it nice and stood up. Alrighty, let me turn this up like this. There you go. Alright, now you can see the height of the cage. See, you can see how the casters are oriented. And now you're going to notice your cage is a little offset. You did notice how she did the little bounce. That's to get the cage settled. Alright, right now she's going to tighten it and do her minor adjustments. That way it's nice and squared away, nice and even. So the box end wrench and the Phillips screwdriver come into here. That's where they would come into play. Obviously you can, your screwdriver out here, fill the box in in here. And this, this is how we orient our bolts. We don't do it backwards. You know, we just want to make it easier on you and we don't want it, you know, any snags. All right. You can see it's still labeled. She can do her adjustments. All right. Meanwhile, she does that. I want to talk about these trucks. So, Drinking cross on this cage system is meant so you're not dealing with the nine different little drinker cups. See, you're not dealing with nine different drinker cups, and it really comes in handy basically all season. So, as you can see, little float cup you adjust, you can adjust this in here and adjust the level. So, why the trust on this cage? Since it's nine cubbies, you're gonna have nine different drinkers. They're all going to be on the inside, and obviously maintenance is something you should have as a priority for your animals. Now, with those trots, you have, instead of nine, you only have three, but you have an insane amount of capacity for your water. So, whether it's summer and you need more water, more, more output, those got you handled. In the winter, you won't have to worry about it freezing since the water is, is uh, moving around in there. You know, so you can come in here with some warm water or just... Pop it, pop it, and then you're good to go. So right now, she's going to put on one of the back straps. All right. Or actually, no, we start with the front strap. <laughs> My bad. This goes here. As you can see, 
Here are your two screw holes. Here and here. It's paramount that you follow our labels. That way it all fits in the same way it was constructed in the shop. So you see, so with this front strap, you're gonna notice it's got a little curvature to it. Oh, I'll, I'll leave that up to her so she can sit. She's got a little curvature to it. We give that curvature to it. Like I said, we're really focused on, on your, you know, your efficiency, and we don't want the customer, you know, getting snagged on anything. Whereas we try to keep those little minor details in check. As you see, she did one screw on one side, and then couples up the next side. That way you keep it nice and even, and you're not doing the, I guess, the backtrack or where you're, oh man, I tightened one side, I need to go and loosen it again. No, you wanna keep it nice and even, one and one. You can see. One thing that I wanted to hit on was when she was tightening her cage system, she did it in a Z pattern. Here, the next side, moves down, tightens this, moves down and tightens that. We want to keep the cage system nice and squared away. That way it's not all rigid and wonky. All right, so she's gonna install that and let's just get her to turn this cage around. Now we can see the installation of the back strap. All right, super. So another thing. So this right angle is gonna go right under this cage. See, you can basically orient yourself by how the, how the writing is, you know, your top back strap and just orient yourself like that. If in case, you know, you, you're, you're a little confused or you just need more clarification, that's another, another good point. If you need more clarification, if you need help or any questions, please feel free to give me a call. I'll always be more than happy to help you out or any one of the Wynola Ranch staff, it will be more than happy to help you out. They said we're here for you and we're here to make your life easy. All right, and then we come to the bottom back strap. So for this model, since it has casters, this is gonna be, the only difference is gonna be the, this bottom strap is gonna be right here. Since it has casters, we obviously want the cage to be sturdy as well as efficient. So, another example, one side moves to the rest. And this is where you would use your Phillips screwdriver or your impact driver. Just line up your holes. And with everything, or actually with these, you're gonna to wanna to leave these nice and snug since these are gonna be your supports. They're gonna be paramount to the, the cage's rigidity. All right. Yeah, the impact drivers make life a whole heck of a lot faster. All right, so you're gonna get that last screw in and then we can move towards adding the other, or the actual whatever is left from the cage, which is basically just you're adding your trays, feeders, and drinkers. All right, here's your cage, here you go. Here's your feeders. All right, as you can see, just boom, hangs on there, and hangs on there. All right, so I do do this in my videos where I do add some tips and tricks that you can do with your cage systems. And here's another one. So if for any reason you wanna use your cage for a grow out cage, or, or something of that sort, you would just grab the feeding trough, unhook it, and drop it. Obviously, you're gonna wanna just set something here. That way, you leave it nice, propped up, super easy, nice and easy to clean, dump out. One thing, these feeding troughs are extremely efficient when you're using your mash or your crumble feed. All right, she put the tray in. There you go. Obviously we got the tray sticking out a little more. So, you know, you don't get any splash or anything from the birds. Super. And just keep your trough lot nice and lined up. There you go. Coming out nice and easy. These trays pull out through the front. We got enough spacing so you can, you know, let whatever waste or manure sit there for a while you know, a day or two and pull it out and you're still able to pull it out nice and easy. Um, we did have a, a customer bring up a great point for these uh, for these uh, trays. You can spray them with uh, a dry film lubricant that's used for lawnmowers that, so the, the grass pulp won't stick under it. You can spray your trays with that and the manure will just fall right out. Or you can use craft paper or paper. We don't recommend you use wood shavings or any straw inside 
or on the tray since it will cause a bacterial infection, which could lead to your bombifloral or whatever, you know, such disease like that. So let's just turn the cage over so I can get these trough drinkers in your view. All right, super, this is the rear of the cage. You can see the back strap, right see where the tray is sitting. And here are your trough drinkers. So like the feeders, they just clip onto the rear. This is how you're gonna receive them. Those are gonna be nice and knotted around in a circle. So you can just take them apart, get this ring with your set of pliers and just slide it on to the top one like you would here. And they all connect in the line. So it's just basically one and one. With the top one, you're gonna identify the top one since this is where your bucket to hose connector is. Right there. All right, and that's how you would hook it up. If you'll do a quick demonstration. And there you go. Do the next link line and slide that up. Super. So you're gonna grab the pliers. That way you can actually get the feel for it or just a, a good reference for it. And just slide it up. Nothing to it. All right, so that is the assembly of a three tier nine section. Let me turn this back around for you. That way you can see the nice finished product. There you go. And there's the cage system. All righty, I am David from Manola Ranch. Any questions, comments, or concerns, any customizations you would like to do to your cage system, or anything that you would like to discuss with us, we're, like I said, we're more than happy to help. Me and my staff will get you squared away. You can text me, I prefer text, you know, since in the shop it's a little noisy, and I'll get back to you, give you a call, or however method you prefer. So, like I said, my name is David, you have a great day, and bye-bye.